in at number 5 we have Wolpertinga. The Wolpertinga can be found in Germany and is a mysterious creature that roams the alpine forests of Bavaria. This odd looking creature isn't particularly large or vicious but can be incredibly scary due to the fact it is made up of different body parts of various animals. It has the head of a rabbit, the body of a squirrel, the legs of a pheasant and has antlers, fangs and wings. Legend has it that if you are brave enough to try and lure the Wolpertinga in to see it for yourself you need to bring salt with you and a trap. It is said that if you sprinkle salt on its tail you can supposedly catch it. Also if you prop open a sack with a spade and light a candle inside the demon will be attracted to the light and once he's inside the sack you remove the spade and trap him. But be very careful because if they feel threatened they can attack and they are extremely quick. The creepiest thing about this demon is that some people have hunted down various woodland creatures to create their own stuffed wolpertingas to keep, sell them to tourists or give them to hotels or inns to put on display for all to see. So if you're planning a trip to Germany I would definitely steer clear of the forest in Bavaria, you wouldn't want to come into contact with this demon creature. In at number 4 we have Tatzel Worm. The Tatzel Worm is a huge man sized worm or snake with a feline face and a reptile tail that usually lives underground in the Eastern Alps in Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Italy, Bavaria and Austria. The only time you may get attacked by this hideous creature is if you disturb it or threaten it while it's burrowed. It is believed that this demonic creature is extremely venomous and can attack you with its poisonous breath and tends to make a high pitched hissing sound when attacking their prey. So if you ever hear that nail on a chalkboard like sound I suggest running the other way. The name Tatzel Worm isn't traditionally used in Switzerland. They usually refer to this demon as Stolen Worm or the Dragon of the Mine Tunnels. The Stolen Worm may also be interpreted to mean a serpent with short, thick feet. An early description of dragon sightings in Switzerland was seen by Johann Jacob Wagner as early as 1680 and then illustrated further by Johann Jacob Schuster in 1723 and referred to as Schuster's Dragons. The cat headed serpent with black grey body and no legs was said to be encountered by Johann and Thomas Tinner at a place locally known as Howellen on the mountain of Frumsen in the barony of Alsax, Switzerland. It was alleged to measure 7 feet or more in length. Residents in the neighbourhood were complaining that their cow's udders were being mysteriously sucked on, but the incident stopped after this creature was killed. Another account of this demon was described as a four legged cat faced mountain dragon by Andreas Raudner as something he encounters in 1660 on Mount Wangersberg in Sargensenland, and when it reared up on its hind legs it became as tall as a man with boar like bristles running down its back. A 70 year old man named Johannes Egerton came into contact with this beast and said when it exhaled its breath the man said he was overcome with dizziness and a massive headache. The naturalist Carl Wilhelm wrote in his book History of Dragons of the Alps in 1887 that these creatures have died out by now but to this day the Tatzel Worm phantom legend lives on and many people still believe these demons remain. In at number 3 we have Black Shook. The Black Shook may be the most terrifying of them all and definitely the deadliest. It's a huge black dog with evil red or green eyes that roams around the countryside of East Anglia. If you ever come in contact with this demon creature you'll most likely die or at least become very ill. Even just looking in the black shuck's eyes directly means certain death. The black shuck is referred by many as an omen of death if ever seen or came in contact with. The name shuck derives from the old English word skooker which translate as devil, fiend and to terrify. In Littleport, Cambridgeshire it's home to two different legends of black dogs which many believe a link to the black shook. One account refers to the story of a huge black dog that haunts the area after being killed rescuing a local girl from a lustful friar in pre-reformation times, while the other story tells of a black dog that haunts the A10 road after its owner drowned in the nearby river Great House in the 1800s. In May 2014 a large dog was excavated at Leyston Abbey by Dig Ventures and many believe it was the remains of a black shook. Dig Ventures came out and said they don't believe the remains were from the black shook stating it was only 2 feet tall and was around the size of a massive carbon dating of the bones indicated the dog was said to be from around the 16 or 1700s. Many people have reported sightings of the black shook and even to this day locals believe this demon is still roaming around England. One local woman said she had seen the creature one summer morning in the 1950s when she returned home from dance near Cromer. A Suffolk man said he had seen the dog one evening on the marshes near Felixstowe and another account of a woman who was cycling during the 1930s. One winter night the woman was riding her bike home after making a delivery when she was followed by a huge dog and no matter how fast she pedaled it seemed to effortlessly keep up to her before suddenly vanishing into thin air. The Black Shook has also been seen many times in pop culture like in the hit TV show Teen Wolf, the 2019 movie Annabelle Comes Home, the 2020 video game Assassin's Creed and even referred to in the 1999 novel Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. In at number 2 we have Basilisk. The Basilisk is an extremely dangerous being. It is a legendary
legendary reptile that is referred to as a serpent king, who can cause death with a single glance and is believed to be able to breathe fire. This snake like being is not very big but is highly venomous and can kill in an instant and leaves a wide trail of venom behind. The basilisk is quite different from a normal looking snake and is named king because it is seen to have a crown shaped crest on its head. One of the earliest accounts of the demon comes from Pliny the Edler's Natural History written in roughly 79 AD, where it's described as a monstrous cow like creature and all who beholds its eyes fall dead upon the spa. The only thing that the basilisk fears is a weasel, it is the only animal that can face and attack the demon snake and apparently the weasel's urine is the basilisk's kryptonite. It can also be killed with the crowing of a rooster and many travellers would and some still do carry a rooster when they venture into areas where it was said that the basilisk lives. Some people have speculated that accounts and descriptions of cobras may have given rise to the legend of the basilisk demon. Cobras can maintain an upright posture and are often killed by mongooses and the king cobra have a crown like symbol on its head. Several species of spitting cobras have the ability to spit their venom from a distance, often in their prey's eyes, so they have many similarities to the basilisk. So if you're ever in southern Europe, I would beware of this monstrous snake demon. And finally in at number one we have Balbus. This demon tends to reside in areas of Lithuania and is basically the boogeyman on steroids. It is a dark demon who will come and kidnap misbehave. The Balbus has piercing red eyes, long thin arms, wrinkling fingers and the most terrifying face. This demon creature stands almost 7 feet tall and their body appears like a large skeleton covered in black leathery skin. They also have extremely sharp claws and usually pounce on their victims from above. Sometimes they use two handed weapons but still have the ability to fight off their opponents with their claws, teeth and horns. This demon likes to hide under carpets or inside dark crevices of your house before appearing and snatching the child. The Balbus is devious, Serious and will stop at nothing to make sure they are victorious in everything they do. Their more subtle sadism and stealth sets them apart from every demon on this list and they like to capture their targets for later torture as opposed to immediate bloodshed. In many places like Italy and the eastern Mediterranean, the Balbus is portrayed as a tall man wearing a heavy black coat with a black hood or hat which hides its face. Sometimes parents would loudly knock under the table, pretending that someone is knocking at the door to make their children behave. It is also featured in a popular Italian nursery Rhyme saying, Who do I give this child to? I will give him to Balbus for a whole year. This tactic is used by many parents throughout Europe to make their children who are misbehaving fearful of getting the wrath of Balbus and in turn making them behave better. Many believe that the popular boogeyman was actually inspired by this demon by the fact that he likes to kidnap during the night, hide in darkness and frightening children into good behaviour. The boogeyman is a term used to instill fear in children and the Balbus is the most terrifying demon of them all. Coming in at number 5 we have Ribasol. Ribasol or Rubasol is a folklore mountain spirit of the giant mountains, a mountain range along the border between the historical lands of Bohemia and Silesia. This demon is the subject of many different legends and fairy tales throughout German folklore. Legend has it that Ribasol is a giant gnome or mountain spirit, with good people he can be friendly, teaches them about medicine and gives presents, but if someone disobeys or disrespects him, his revenge is severe and can be deadly. He sometimes plays the role of a trickster in folk tales. The origin story of Ribasol comes from pagan times and he is known as a fantastic lord of weather of the mountains and is similar to the Wild Hunt, which are a group that roam the sky during storms and is an omen of disaster. This demon has the ability to change the weather drastically. He can send rain, lightning, thunder and snow from the mountain to the lands below. Ribasol takes the appearance of a monk in a grey frock, holds a string instrument in his hand which is known as the storm harp and walks so heavily that the earth shakes around him. Others believe the demon inhabits that of a large bear and wolves to blend in with the other animals on the mountains. In the area surrounding his mountain there is a large botanical garden named after the demon, named Ribasol's garden. In the Czech Republic local fairy tales say that Ribasol gives sourdough to people and invented traditional regional soup named Kaiselo. There is also a mountain named Kotel which means cauldron. When fog rises from the valley at the bottom of the Kotel, people say that's when Rubicel is cooking the Kaiselo soup. To this day, this demon's legend lives on. Coming in at number 4 we have Adank. Adank or Afank is a demon originating from British, Welsh and Celtic mythology. It's said to look like a beaver, crocodile or dwarf like demon and are about 7 feet long and weigh around 250 pounds. They prey upon those who are foolish enough to enter the lake it lives in. This demon once lived in Lynn Bafog or in Lynn Lion Lake and it can be lured out of the water by a woman and once this happens, 
Adang becomes powerless. There are some stories of this demon being destroyed. One tells of a man dragging the beast out of the water to slay it. Another says it was lured out of the water, where it eventually fell asleep and was bound in chains and slayed. But many believe this demon still roams in the lakes of Europe. The Adang is a solitary predator that builds dams to create smaller lakes, but still a part of the larger lake it lives in. Once they find the right place for a habitat, it's their territory and theirs only. Anything that comes near the lake or the adjoining rivers becomes this demon's prey. The Adank hunts its prey by floating just under the surface of the water waiting for its next meal to approach and when it does they attack with a bone crushing bite. And Once they have their prey in their mouth the Adank then drags them under the water and goes in for the kill. They wait for the prey at their most vulnerable and takes advantage of that. Like a beaver den the Adank's lair can only be accessed from below the water's surface but is truly hideous sight because they use the remains of its victims for decoration of their habitat and the stench of decay lingers all around the demon's lair. According to many historical writings between 1382 and 1410, it describes the mass destruction of Adank and how he can cause massive flooding. And one time in particular, the floods caused all the original inhabitants of Britain except for Dwyfin and Dwyfach, who went on to find new race of Britons. This demon is recognized by many throughout Europe and the world and is mentioned in many different books and TV shows. In at number three, we have Piccolus. Piccolus is a demon from the ancient inhabitants of Prussia, described as an angry and evil spirit, with the appetite for human blood. Piccolus and Patalo were gods in the pagan Prussian mythology worshipped by the old Prussians. Most researchers believe both these gods were the same person and were in charge of the underworld and the dead. This demon was first mentioned in 1418 by Bishop of Warmia in a letter to the Pope and chronicler Simon Grunau. In a letter to the Pope and chronicler Simon Grunau, who provided more details about Piccolus. According to Simon, Piccolus was one of the three gods betrayed on the flag and coat of arms of King Waiwuto and worshipped in the temple of Rikioto. He appears to look like an old man with a white beard and white headdress. He was scary and ruthless god of the dead. This demon would haunt and taunt the living if they disobeyed the pagan priests or buried the dead without proper sacrifices to the gods. Many other medieval writers believe in Simon's descriptions of the demon. In another writing, the Sadovian books, it mentioned two beings, Peckles, the god of hell and darkness, and Peckles, Airborne spirit or devil. The same bear is also found in the church decrees of 1530. Many believe these two demons mentioned are just extended descriptions of Piccolus. Caspar Heinenberger and later authors attempted to reconcile the accounts provided by Simon Grunau and the Sadovian book. In the 17th century, Christoph Harknock and Matthias Pretorius testify that people still believe in this demon, and many believe Piccolus is in fact the devil. In a number two, we have Bifrons. Bifrons is from the Earl of Ginistan, with six legions of demons under his command. Command. He teaches sciences and arts and has knowledge of gems, woods, and herbs. This demon has the ability to change corpses from their original grave into other places, sometimes putting magic lights on the graves that appear like candles. He first appeared as a monster but then changed his shape into that of a man to blend in with earthly people. Bifrons was originally the Roman god Janus and is often referred to as so. In ancient Roman religion and myth, Janus is the god of beginnings and transitions, also of gates, doors, passages, endings, and time. He is also well versed in astrology and planetary influences, as well as geometry, herbology, mineralogy, and botany. He is usually depicted as having a monstrous appearance along with two faces, due to his ability to look into the future and the past. The Romans named the month of January in his honour. Janus presided over the beginning and ending of conflict, and hence war and peace. The doors of his temple were open in a time of war and closed to mark the peace. As a god of transitions, he has functions pertaining to birth, journeys, and exchange. Janus had a major presence in religious ceremonies throughout the years and was ritually invoked at the beginning of each one and heavily honoured on many different occasions. Bifrons is mainly in charge of moving bodies from one grave to another, while hellish demon Muma takes over the souls. Accordingly, Bifrons has 26 legions of Ginistan's army under his command and is the 46th spirit of the 72 Solomon imprisoned in a brass vessel. And finally in at number one we have Krampus. One of the most popular demons coming from Europe is Krampus. He is a horned half goat, half man beast who terrorizes children throughout the Christmas season who have misbehaved. Assisting Saint Nicholas, the pair visit the children on the night of December 25th each year, and Saint Nick rewards the well behaved children who have been good all year with gifts, while the badly behaved ones on the naughty list get a visit from Krampus and receive punishment from him. The origin of this demon is not directly known, but many believe this demon goes back centuries, 
and originated in Germany. And since 1984, this demon has become known globally. Since the 19th century, during the Christmas season, many Europeans will exchange greeting cards featuring the Krampus demon. The feast of Saint Nicholas is celebrated in parts on Europe on December 6th, and on the evening of December 5th is known as Krampus Night, where the wicked hairy devil appears on the streets, where he visits homes and businesses, wreaking havoc on unsuspecting humans. Many people believe Krampus has multiple appearances, but the most common is that he is hairy with black or brown fur, has hooves and the horns of a goat, as well as long pointed tongue hanging out and sharp fangs. There are festivals all throughout Europe hold to celebrate Krampus, while many dress up in elaborate horrifying costumes that resemble this demon. In the aftermath of the 1932 election in Austria, the Krampus tradition was prohibited by the Dolphus regime and the Christian Social Party. In the 1950s, the government distributed pamphlets titled Krampus is an Evil Man. Towards the end of the century, Krampus' popularity rose, and the festivals began and continue to this day. Young men dress up in Krampus costumes and roam the streets, frightening children with rusty chains and bells. Many of these festivals take place in Austria, Romania, Bavaria, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, and Croatia just to name a few. We've all heard about Santa and kids are constantly told if they have bad behaviour they will get coal for Christmas, but many don't realise that this has come from the legend of Krampus. This demon has become a global figure and is depicted in many horror films and has become a part of American pop culture. Coming in at number 5 we have the Villa. The Villa are Eastern Europe's nymphs or mountain fairies who can be found living in hills and mountains. Some versions of folklore claim that the Villa live up in the clouds, but throughout history these creatures are almost always spotted in the wilderness in all versions of folklore. These mysterious creatures are believed to have power over the wind, and they are credited with causing windstorms that can wreak havoc on the surrounding communities and urban structures. Those who claim to have seen the villa say that they appear as beautiful women who sparkle in dresses made of leaves and flowers, while others claim they are ghost-like creatures wrapped in long cloaks or rich blue robes. Unlike many of the creepy creatures who haunt the forests and homes of Eastern Europe, the villa are beautiful and feminine, but don't let their appearance fool you. While many believe they are helpful creatures, many people throughout Europe claim they are destructive and use their appearance for their gain. They are known to tempt men to dance with them, then rob and kill them, and then hide their bodies in the clouds or throughout the dense wilderness. These demons are incredibly strong and powerful and are known to end the lives of men who defy them or break promises. You will know that you are in the territory of the villa if you see deep rings in the grass. This is the sign that the villa has danced in one spot. It is said that treading on the rings will bring bad luck, so avoid them at all costs if you ever discover them in the woods. If you're planning a trip to the Eastern European area, I would definitely avoid camping or anything to do with the woods, due to many demons living and lurking in the forests around Europe. Many locals like to leave peace offerings for these demons. Things like ribbons, fruit, cake, flowers and vegetables are often left on the hills where lighting is known to strike. When locals want to venture into the woods, they hope that these peace offerings will bring them luck and keep them safe from the villas. In at number 4 we have Nekalave. The Nekalave is a horse-like demon from Arcadia. Indian mythology that combines equine and human elements, originating from the Orkney Islands in the Northern Isles of Scotland. Also as the origins in North mythology and British folklorist Catherine Briggs called it the nastiest of all the demons of Scotland's Northern Isles. This demon's breath was thought to wilt crops and sicken livestock, and the creature was held responsible for droughts and epidemics on lands even though it's predominantly a sea dweller. This demon could cause mass destructions for the locals across land and sea, which is why many believe it to be the most terrible terrifying of all the demons throughout Europe. A graphic description of the Nukalave as it appears on land was given by an islander who claimed to have come in contact with the demon, but many accounts describe the details of the creature's appearance as inconsistent. Many believe they have many similarities to other sea monsters. This demonic creature is destructive to many humans and the environment, but it's believed throughout the summer months it is kept combined by the Mither of the Sea, an ancient Orcadian spirit, who is the only one that can control the Nukalave. Canadian folklore has a strong Scandinavian influence, and it may be that the Nekalave is a composite of a water horse from Celtic mythology, and a creature imported by the Norsemen. As with malevolent entities such as the Kelpie, it possibly offered an explanation for incidents that islanders in ancient times could not otherwise understand. This demon has terrorised the sea and land throughout Europe for centuries, and according to Orkney resident and folklorist Walter Trail Denison, Nekalave means the devil of the sea. Many people think this demon is only able to thrive in the water but can in fact roam the land for some time. According to an encounter with the demon, on land it appears to have the torso of a man which is attached to a horse's back. It has no legs but large 
arms that can reach the ground. When it's back in the water, it is unknown what it looks like specifically, but it resembles a large, hideous sea creature. In at number three, Koschi. Kostya is often given the nickname of the immortal or the deathless and comes from popular Russian folklore. The story goes that a spell is cast on a man which prevents him from being killed. He hides his soul inside nested objects to protect it. The origin of this demon is unknown but contains elements from the 12th century pagan leader Khan Konchak who is recorded in the Tales of Igor's campaign. Over time, a balanced view of the non-Christian human Khan who dates back to the 12th century but may have been slightly distorted by Christian Slavic writers. By the 18th century and likely earlier, the legend of this demon had been appearing in Slavic tales. This demon has the ability to cast sleep spells on their foes and can only be broken by playing on enchanted Gusli. Depending on the tale, he has different characteristics. He may ride a three or seven legged horse, may have tusks or fangs, or may possess a variety of different magic objects like cloaks and rings. It is positive though that this demon possesses many magic powers, making humans frightened of coming in contact with this demon. The humans who are the most scared of this demon are young women because he tends to menace women with his magical powers. There are various versions of the Kochi demon and have been made into terrifying fairy tales all over the world in places like Greece, Albania, Croatia, Serbia, Hungary and Lithuania. Many people who are soon to be wed are terrified that their soon to be wives will be taken or killed by Kochi, so many of them stay hidden with their beloved until their wedding day to ensure the safety of their soon to be wives. Many stay away from Europe for their weddings and honeymoons because of this demon to ensure the safety of their loved ones. In at 2 we have Strigoi. Strigoi is a terrifying demon from Romanian mythology and a troubled spirits that are said to have risen from the grave to prey on the living. It is believed that they have the ability to transform into an animal, become invisible and gain vitality from the blood of their victims. Bram Stoker's Dracula has been the modern interpretation of the Strigoi through the historic links with vampirism. One of the earliest members of historical Strigoi was Gio Grando Alilovic from the region of Istria. This village was believed to be the first real person to be labelled as a vampire because he was referred to as a Strigoi. Drew is said to have terrorised his former village for 16 years after his death. Eventually he was decapitated by the local priests and villagers to let the terror subside. Johann Weikard von Valvesor wrote about Jur's life and afterlife in his extensive work The Glory of the Duchy of Carnoila when he visited Kringer during his travels. This was the first written document on vampires in relation to the demon Strigoi. An 1865 article in Transylvanian Folklore by Wilhelm Schmidt describes Strigoi as nocturnal creatures that prey on infants and haunts the nearby villages, stalking women waiting for them to give birth so they can sneak into their home and steal their babies. In 1909, writer Franz Harman mentioned this demon in a book, saying that the peasant children from a village in the Carpathian Mountains started to pass away mysteriously. The villagers began to suspect their recently deceased count turned bloodthirsty demon was the one causing these mysterious deaths. A common way used to identify the Strigoi was to place a young child dressed in white on a white horse near the graveyard at midday. It was believed that the horse would stop at the grave of the suspected demon. And finally, in and one, we have Kulm King. One one of the scariest demons from Europe is that of the Kulm King. This creature comes from Estonian mythology and is the evil protector of the forest, eating children alive when they bother forest spirits. Not only do they prey on children, but they terrorise anyone that comes in contact with them, being able to possess people, turning them into devils and causing havoc as lesser personifications of evil. They like to haunt and terrorise grown ups who happen to cross paths with it while walking the dark forest around Europe. It is the restless ghost of an unholy dead and you run the risk of being harassed every in the wild because the Com King doesn't have a fixed haunting place. To make it even worse, many believe this creature has the ability to go through the body of humans, and if this happens, that person becomes evil, thus creating a legion of killers. This terrifying demon can appear in many different forms, including a dog, a cat, and a haystack. Some of the more sinister and possibly accurate descriptions of the Com King are they look like a demonic polar bear, white sharp spikes running down their backs, and sharp teeth and claws that cause death immediately. Yes, this demon is a protector of the forest, but to us humans it is similar to the devil and takes no prisoners. If you're venturing in the forest, I would be very careful to not encounter this creature, and if you do, be respectful of the forest and its habitat if you don't want to escape alive. Not only does this demon frequent public places, but can also enter private places without invitation, a trait that can be found in other folklore monsters, such as vampires and certain types of ghosts. Anyone who enters the woods in Eastern Europe worries if the Kom King could be lurking nearby.